Hello, friends. It has been a while, but this is Mr. John, and I am here to read another book. This book is called The Okapi Tale. Just Okapi Tale. It just came out. It's by Kefi Steele and Jacob Kramer. Now, before you continue this video, if you haven't read or heard me read Noodlefint, you should go back and watch that one. Uh, this is the sequel to Noodlefint, and uh, you'll enjoy it a lot more if you read the first one, definitely. Uh, this is a great book. I just read it through for the first time um, to myself, and um, it, it does a great job of um, taking basic economic justice uh, questions and um, putting them in simple terms. And it's also entertaining as heck. So without further ado, let's read Okapi Tale. Not so long ago, Noodlefint and her friends invented a machine that would turn anything into noodles. There it is, the Fantastic Noodler. Using the Fantastic Noodler, they turned pillows into ravioli and shoelaces into spaghetti. It was such a wonderful machine, they gave it to the town for all to use. Animals from far and wide flocked to Beeston to crank stuff through the machine. How many animals do you recognize in there? That's a lot. Noodlefin's friends welcomed the newcomers and invited them to picnic together. But not everyone in Beeston was happy. The kangaroos missed the days when the town was called Rueville, and they were the only ones in charge. They grumbled and whined about their new neighbors. They even complained to the mayor. Noodlefint was so inspired by all the visitors that she now tr wanted to travel the world. For her friends. It looks like a spotted pig, a fly, and a duck. She took a job as a cook on a ship sailing to Japan and China, places famous for their noodles. As Noodlefint was boarding, an okapi disembarked. Enjoy Beeston, called Noodlefint, but the okapi just sniffed his snooty snout. Don't mind that okapi to list, said the captain. He's very rude and only cares about money. As soon as the okapi saw the fantastic noodler, he wanted to buy it. Look at that. Who owns this machine? asked the okapi. Nobody, said the fly. It's public. That means it belongs to everyone. Someone must own it, declared the okapi. Everything belongs to someone. The mice, who had lovely voices, burst into song. We built this machine together. It's for everybody to use. Whether you're scaly or hairy or feathered, there's noodles for me's and for you's. When everyone owns it, nobody does. We can share all the things we produce. Whether you're covered in spines or in fuzz, there's noodles for me's and for you's. Yokapi snorted and went to see the mayor. I'd like to buy your old machine, said the Okapi. It's dented and clutters up the park. Besides, it's attracting all kinds of uh, vermin. The mayor nodded. These newcomers are ruining Rueville. Sell it to me, said the Okapi. I'll help you restore the good old days. The Okapi wrote the mayor a big check. That means they gave him a lot of money and they sealed the deal. The next morning, when all the animals of Beeston went to make noodles, all they found was a sign. And that says, now hiring, Okapi Pasta. Now hiring. That means somebody wants some people to work for them 
and make a little money so that they can make a whole lot of money. Meanwhile, Noodlefint was enjoying Japan, a place famous for udon, soba, and ramen. One day, Noodlefint found herself in the middle of a parade of dancers wearing tall wooden clogs called geta. They looked like so much fun. Look at this. Rune's got these little wooden clogs on. Noodlefint bought an extra, extra large pair for herself and matching sets for her friends. But back home, unbeknownst to Noodlefint, things were getting much, much worse. Oh goodness, what happened to Beeston? Looks different. The Okapi's factory had turned all beach shells into conchile and the leaves into folie. One day, the butterflies vanished from the butterfly garden, and the next night, boxes of barfale were being loaded onto trucks. With all the money he was making, the Okapi bought the whole town. He bought the grocery store, the bistro, and the farmer's market. Each time, he raised the prices to get more money. The only way Noodlefin's friends could get enough money to buy food was to work in the Okapi's factory. Oh, look at all that thick, gray, smoggy smoke. Day by day, the Okapi ordered them to work faster and faster, cranking out more and more pasta. Goodness, what do you think about that? The workers protested outside City Hall, but the mayor just shrugged. Job creators like the Okapi are beautifying Rueville, said the mayor, and making it safer. Look at these statues and the shiny new cages in the zoo. Oh goodness, do you remember what the zoo means for the animals of Beeston? The zoo is where they put Noodlefent to punish her so that she couldn't see her friends or her loved ones. Noodlefin's friends chanted, Cages cannot make us safer. Statues cannot feed our town. The bad old days won't be our future. We demand that you step down. Ooh, they are angry. How dare you speak to a kangaroo like that, snapped the mayor. He went inside to meet with the Okapi. Meanwhile, Noodlefent was having a great time in China. She learned to stretch Biang Biang and to eat them with spicy chili sauce. She loved slurping floppy sheets of Pugaiman. But one day, Noodlefent saw a strange new brand of pasta at the market. It says Okapi's Farfalle. They're delicious. Made in Rueville. Holding the box, her trunk tingled with fear. Deep down, she knew something had gone very, very wrong. Noodlefin rushed to the docks, where her shipmates were loading crates of juicy peaches. There she is running to the docks, and there's the ship. My friends need me at home in Beeston, she told the captain. Can you help? Of course. We sail tonight. At sea, Noodlefint cooked and sang with her shipmates. Oh my goodness, look at that beautiful view. I wonder what Noodlefint's thinking about right now. Well, what did she sing? The more I see, the more I think about how we can change our ways to share in common all the things that help us live throughout our days. Food and water, medicines, hot tubs, energy and trains, housing and the wilderness, factories for making things. Orchards, farms, and neighborhoods are not for the wealthy few. They should be held as public goods. They all belong to me and you. You know, it's true when you travel, you can really open up your mind about different possibilities. A few weeks later, Noodlefint arrived home. 
Her friends rushed to meet her at the dock. They hugged, ate peaches, and opened their presents. Everyone click-clocked on their new getta. They stayed up late into the night, making plans. I wonder what they're going to do. The next morning at the factory, everyone was a little bit taller and a little bit wobbly. Look, they're wearing their getta. Within, uh, when the work whistle blew, they began to work, but slowly. After an hour, they had only turned one bell into a single campanello. Where's my pasta? demanded the Okapi. We need to ship 3,000 boxes by midnight. The workers began to move even slower. Move, you lazy sloths! Work! Work faster, shouted the Okapi. Slowly, Noodlefint raised her trunk. The signal! In a flash, the workers jammed their getta into the fantastic noodler. The machine shook, sputtered, and oozed thick, stinking goo. It was completely clogged. Sabotage! Sabotage most vile! The workers declared, With all due respect, Mr. Okapi, we've had quite enough of your greed. You're selfish and mean, controlling and bossy. You've taken much more than you need. We are entitled to all we've created, including this noodle machine. We're taking it back. We will not be cheated. We're no longer part of your scheme. I bought it fair and square, cried the Okapi. The mayor had no right to sell it, said the fly. It belongs to all of us. But I own it, whined the Okapi. Let's settle this, said Noodlefint, with a vote. Do you know what voting is? If you don't, you're about to find out. Soon, all of Beeston was gathered to vote on the question. <clears throat> to whom does the fantastic noodler belong? All of us, or the Okapi? When the votes were counted, the majority agreed. The machine was a public good and could not be privately owned. Oh my goodness, look at all those votes who said yes. It's a public good. And look, only a few people wanted it to belong to the, the Okapi. The next day, the workers brought crates of juicy peaches to City Hall, impeached the mayor, and sent him packing. Soon, Beeston elected a new mayor, someone who would do a fly-tastic job. For the inauguration, Noodlefint cranked blankets through the noodler, making loads of floppy pugaimian. And the mice, of course, led the chorus. We are making decisions together for the many, not just the few. Whether you're scaly or hairy or feathered, democracies for me's and you's. When nobody owns things, everyone does. We can share everything that we use. Whether you're covered in spines or in fuzz, democracies for me's and you's. As for the Ocapitalist, he had trouble making money in Beeston. Nobody would shop at his stores or even talk to him, so he picked up and left town. Who knows? Maybe he's headed your way. And that is O Copy Tale by Jacob Kramer and K5 Steel. A lovely book. I will put a link in the description. Uh, if you want to buy this book, I suggest you do so uh, on bookshop.org, which will donate um, a certain share of the proceeds to either an independent bookstore of your choice or uh, split the proceeds in a collective fund for independent bookstores that participate. Um, it's a great way to support um, independent bookstores and to um, get books uh, at a reasonable price without having to go to Amazon or their ilk. So uh, thank you so much for reading with me today.
Bye-bye.